Welcome ladies and gents, so we've got an update on Prey. This is of course the Predator prequel film. Uh, it's not like a direct prequel, but it is set in the past. Uh, 300 years in fact. Directed by Dan Trachtenberg, which is one of the main selling points of this film. It knows how to handle uh, women characters, strong female characters. Did 10 Cloverfield Lane. Did that very, very well. Uh, in my view, anyway. And... So, th this is an interesting project to explore. It's the first period piece we've ever had in the Predator um, video medium, outside of, of course, comics and things like that. We've never had it. So, it's it's fascinating to see. And we started learning bits and pieces around this uh, as it's been drip-fed information, as we always do. There's some negatives. Uh, it's a Hulu exclusive. I think that's a shame. I think it'll be coming to Disney Plus, if I remember rightly, uh, confirmed in the UK. So, Disney Plus subscribers, don't worry, you'll get it in the UK. But there are some negatives. Uh, but some of the positives, it's looking like it's shaping up quite well. And Dan Trachtenberg, on a whole, seems to get it, I guess. And yeah, some of that might be me being hopeful. But taking a look at this story today and the updates that we're getting, as well as the image. Because this image, a brand new image, you would have seen it as part of the, uh, you know, the thumbnail. It's a really, really good image. So, I thought we'd take a look at this. Now, this is over on avpgalaxy.net, friends of the channel. Fantastic aggregator for all things alien and predator. And uh, Trachtenberg shares new prey details, future predator sequels, and a new prey still showing Naru hiding. Now, Naru is Amber Mathunder's character, the the lead female uh, in this, you know, in in, in, in this feat, in, in this film. So, that's who, yeah, uh, Naru is. Now, uh, the news outlet Time Out has published a new production still from Prey, as well as the interview with Dan Trachtenberg. So, there's a few interesting bits of information uh, in there that uh, these individuals don't think that they've heard mentioned before. Uh, and they even discuss Amber Mid Thunder and her co-stars going through tough training uh, sort of regime before filming. So we'll cover that first and then we'll look at the image and, and some interesting elements around the Predator, I think. So in terms of the... Also, just as a side note, if you can hear stuff in the background, like I'm having some work done at my house... And unfortunately, it's quite loud. I can't nullify it. Uh, it just is what it is. So anyway, uh, Mithunder went through a grueling pre-movie training regime with her First Nations co-stars. Uh, it was a month or two of physical training, not just to learn the choreography of the fight sequences, but learning to work as a unit with the other Comanche hunters, says Trachtenberg, who calls the Comanche warriors the SEAL Team 6 of their time. Now, I think that's a bit, you know, you know, a little bit of an over-glorification of it, I'm sure. Some of this is obviously PR. I get it. I get it. Now, what I'm hoping for, and, you know, a lot of people may disagree with me on this, but what I'm hoping for, at least from this movie, is, you know, removing ourselves from the standardised approach to female characters in this day and age. Now, the standardised approach to a female character in this day and age... It's just having a character that just is great. All right now, I always, I, I often cite like the hero's journey uh, and characters having to go through character arc, struggles, uh, imperfect heroes, right? Someone that goes through that sort of arc to become the greatest or the, the great, well, not greatest, but you get my point. You know, we need this hero's journey and, and often I think creatively speaking we don't get that with female characters in this day and age it's quite rare that that does happen i'm sure many people can point to a lot of characters that, that just doesn't happen and then you know they get the name mary sue um which just is what it is so i'm really hoping that this character of uh, naru at least suffers some strife some defeat and obviously it can't be uh, defeat by the hands of the predator because the predator would you know rip her skull out but at least some defeat by someone else loses someone close to her, her brother, her father, someone like that. And a big bloody mess that is her own fault. And she learns from it to then 
better herself and become a strong character. There's nothing wrong with that as a narrative uh, and sort of crafting a character. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, a lot of people are obviously very hypersensitive for strong females in uh, taking over films and sort of, uh, you know, um, admonishing men moving forwards. And it's definitely a warranted sensitivity. But that character arc, there going through strife, learning, etc., etc., that's very standard. You know, you cast your mind back to Alien, to Aliens. The amount of shit that Sigourney Weaver's Ripley went through was just mental to then become, you know, this badass warrior. Much the same way uh, Sarah Connor in Terminator to Terminator 2 had to go through quite a lot of struggles and strife from this sort of innocent, uh, you know, sort of bleary eyed you know, wide-eyed character to this absolute badass bitch. We have to have those kind of things. So hopefully that's what they do with this. But again, it does remain to be seen. Now here's the image. And I really like this image. I really like it. And I really like it because although the Predator's there, it's not there. You can't really see it. But you can. But you can't. And I really like it. Uh, to me, it shows... It's, I mean, it's just sheer terror, isn't it? You can see how terrified uh, Amber, you know, the, the, the character of Naru is. I mean, she's absolutely bricking herself right here. Really bricking herself. And I'm really intrigued to see what this Predator looks like. And he goes into detail in a moment about it as well. But I'm really intrigued to see uh, and see it all come together. But it's such a great image. Uh, this, to me here, this is very textbook uh, sort of horror. You know, sort of character out of shot, but in shot, but not, and out of focus. And actually, if you're looking at the framing, the, the, the framing itself is good. Uh, the lenses that they're using are really nice, produces a very, very nice bokeh effect. Uh, so from a cinematography perspective, I appreciate this still image. Now, here's the interesting stuff we have about the Predator being 300 years older. Not 300 years old, but 300 years older than the Predators that we have seen before. He says this, I wanted the Predator to be scarier than we've seen it before. Great. That's, that's great. Good. Yeah, cool. If it is scarier, bang on. Let's bring this back to horror, right? The AVP stuff wasn't horror. It just wasn't. Uh, it's intelligent, and it has advanced technology, and that makes it even more difficult to take on. But because the movie is set 300 years in the past, those things need to feel a bit older than we've seen before. And thats I think that's going to be one of the most intriguing elements of this film, is to craft an advanced alien species that hunts for fun, but make their advanced technology seem older than what we've seen already, but still yet advanced. I think that'll be really interesting to see whether they can pull that off. Now he says this, uh, but also still far more advanced than what we think our Earthlings would be able to handle. And he says the remorseless hunter killer from space also has a new look. I wanted to make sure the head was more proportional to the body, says the director. This predator is much slimmer and less armoured than it's ever been. It's more creature it's still hulking and ferocious. Now, this to me, this to me speaks more true to the Jungle Hunter, so the original Predator. The Predator design there was very much in proportion. I don't, I've never looked at that image and gone, oh, the head's quite large, you know. The head crest, you know, as it sort of crests up and stuff like that, sort of bony structures, I guess, uh, is quite large. Yeah, sure. But overall, like I, I think that's fairly in proportion. And then they they changed the sizing structures of them. Studio ADI, like the amalgamated dynamics, they, they're great. Like they're really, really good at what they do. But they've never nailed the predator. And loads of people say the wolf predator is the best one ever. It, it, it's simply not. They never nail the mouth, right? They managed to slim the wolf predator down a little bit, but it was never fully the Stan Winston one. It wasn't the same. And it's all to do with the articulation of the mouth and the the sort of over-articulation. You know, it, it, it became too much. The ability to open it up too much and over-articulate it. And the eyebrows were all moving. It's very strange 
what they did with their Predator designs. I've never, I've never liked them. Um, but this sounds, this sounds great to me, personally. This sounds really, really good. Yeah, really, really interesting stuff. Now they also say Trachtenberg also mentions the name of Nauru's dog, which we saw in the trailer, which I don't think has been revealed before. The dog's name is uh, Saril, I think. And Nara's relationship with it is similar to Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior. Uh, the 10 Cloverfield, Light, 10 Cloverfield Lane director also mentions that Prey was inspired by Sonny Landham's character in the first Predator, uh, Billy, who was, you know, part Sioux, CO, CO, Sue. I'm butchering these things. Uh, but basically, he was, you know, part sort of Comanche himself. Uh, Prey was filmed in Alberta, Canada, and the weather and terrain there helped give the film the irreverent like authenticity. When asked if there will be further Predator sequels after this one, Trachtenberg hints that there might be. Very possibly. There are a lot of exciting ideas for what could be next for the franchise, says Trachtenberg. The things that most excite me are the boldest swings, and I think there's scope to do other things that haven't been done before. So there you have it, ladies and gents. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop them all down below. I'd really appreciate it. Also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out my Teespring store. Supporting the channel via this way does go a long way but also not only that you do get to wear some awesome merch these are one-of-a-kind designs designed for me by my graphic designer we of course have our clown world line which is uh, in mugs hoodies t-shirts we've got space jeebus uh, and then for something a little bit different we of course have right down at the bottom right here we have our pulsar gtir also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out and supporting my second channel, which is Car Nonsense. This is a vlog and car channel. You can find links to this in the description box along with my Teespring. Please do consider supporting.